Hey, hey, welcome to video number eight, the last video in our series. Today, I'm really excited to share with you some of the science behind essential oils that I think will be practical and useful information for you, not just, you know, some stuff over your head, hopefully. And I wanted to also share with you about why sourcing matters because co-impact sourcing, the model that doTERRA uses, is just so, so amazing. And um, the first thing I wanna talk to you about is how essential oils are made, okay? So um, some oils are called, it's called cold press, and then some are steam distilled. And so I think that's important for when we're, what we're gonna talk about next. So I'm gonna show you a couple of videos that can better explain it than I can very, very quickly. Um, okay, actually, oops, let me click another button here. Share, computer Okay, so here's the video on how cold press oils are made. Citrus oils such as bergamot have a thick peel protecting their inner flesh. Around the outside of the peel is a waxy rind that contains tiny sacs of essential oil. To collect this oil, the fruit rind undergoes a process called expression or cold pressing. First, the fruit is packed into the cold press machinery where it passes across sharp rasping cylinders that cut up the surface of the fruit's peel. This causes the essential oil sacs to burst and release their contents. Water is sprayed over the fruit to collect the essential oil. The mixture is then filtered to remove any solid particles and centrifuged to remove the water, leaving behind pure essential oil. Cold pressed bergamot oil has a potent fragrance strikingly similar to that of the whole fruit. Pretty cool, makes sense. And I'm gonna show you the video on steam distillation. Steam distillation is the most common method used to collect essential oils from plants. Take lemongrass, for example. Immediately after harvest, the long, narrow lemongrass leaves are packed into a special apparatus called a distillation still. After sealing the lid and using careful control of temperature and pressure, steam is forced through the plant material where it ruptures small essential oil containing sacs in the plant's tissues. Because of the aromatic nature of essential oils, they are easily carried by steam into a special tube called the collection tube, causing it to condense into liquid water. The collected mixture consists of two layers, a layer of water mixed with water-soluble components from the plant, sometimes called floral water, on the bottom, and a layer of essential oil that floats to the top. Because essential oils are not soluble in water, the two layers are easily separated, allowing for collection of just the pure essential oil. All right, so that is <laughs> how essential oils are made, okay? And I'm gonna go to my PowerPoint now. And we're gonna talk about some of the science behind the oils, but I wanted to, I want to really uh, share with you about the sourcing of the oils because that's really the key to all of this and the key to doTERRA when, I mean, you can get essential oils from anywhere, but they're oftentimes cut with synthetics or fillers. And so that's why doTERRA is certified pure therapeutic grade oils. And we've been talking about that all along the different grades of essential oils and fragrances on the market today. And what I love, love, love about doTERRA is that it is a science-based company. So we have a full laboratory of scientists, chemists, doctors. Um, doTERRA has been incorporated in many hospitals and universities 
throughout the country and even um, in Europe and Asia. And so just really incredible to see the science coming out behind the essential oils. And you know, this is something you really wanna go to doTERRA convention if you wanna learn more about the science and hear from actual doctors from all, all these different organizations and how they're utilizing it in a practical way. And then, you know, the science that m might not, you know, help you um, practically, like, you know, if I have a sunburn, I'm just gonna reach for my lavender. Um, but it's really, really interesting. And so I just wanna give you guys a taste of the science today. Um, and what I'm sharing with you is out of the doTERRA essential oil chemistry handbook. And it is um, on the website, doTERRA.com. There's so, so, so many resources to go on there and, and learn more. Um, so this is the chemistry wheel, okay? So, all right, I'm gonna try to break this down in super simple terms for everybody. Now, I'm not a science expert or a chemist by any means, but, I do have, you know, a basic fundamental understanding of the science and chemical constituents that go that are behind the oils. And so that's why they have these medicinal compounds in them, these medicinal uses. That's why, you know, John Hopkins University is, the, you know, the only essential oil brand they use in their hospitals and um, in the university is doTERRA because you're going to get a, you know, tried and true product every single time that actually has these medicinal compounds or chemical constituents in them. Okay, so on the chemistry wheel, um, the middle part, it, you start in the middle, which is the terpene backbone type. Then next is the functional group, then the chemical constituent name, then the essential oil. So let me give you some examples. Okay, so these are some of the essential oils with a monoterpene backbone and you know you really don't need to know what all these things are I'm gonna tell you the point in just a moment um, so then if we go to the next level which is the functional group um, we can see on the left hand side there's monoterpenes and then in the chemical constituent name that would be the limonene and unfortunately i don't have a pointer on here or i'd point it out to you but i'm talking about the left yellow section and you'll see in that section um all of your citrus oils your green mandarin bergamot wild orange tangerine grapefruit lemon lime and so we talk a lot about you know using lemon and wild orange those are definitely two of the most popular um oils uh, in the citrus family um, but just to look, you know, there's all these different options and, you know, I pinpointed grapefruit, but also interesting celery seed is actually in that same field. Um, and the limonene is the most prominent chemical constituent in all of these oils, um, the pink pepper and the celery seed, which I thought were very interesting because those are all uplifting and going to be, um, you know, really supportive of uplifting mood. And then in that same category is blue tansy and Douglas fir, okay? And then, and I'm gonna, it's gonna make more sense as I go. And then in the restoring category, you'll see, you know, all these oils like oregano that, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about these ones, oregano, clove, cinnamon, which are all in the on guard, right? Um, but then you've also got your, um, thyme and cilantro. So, you know, those are also in the herb family with the oregano. So it's, it's interesting that they're all in this one category, right, of restoring. And then you've got your Melissa oil, um, one of the strongest oils to combat those environmental threats um, that we are especially dealing with during the winter season, right? So what I kind of want to get to the point of here is that when one oil isn't working for your body, you can go to this wheel and actually look and go, oh, look, there's other options besides just oregano. Maybe I wanna use thyme, oregano, and cilantro and really ramp up my herb intake to um, beat these environmental threats, okay? And it's just like when you go to the doctor and they give you a prescription and, you know, um, they say, okay, if that doesn't work, come back, let's try something else, right? You don't just go, oh, 
I, well, I tried one prescription and it didn't work. So I guess all prescriptions don't work. I'm never going to the doctor again, right? None of us really say that. Um, it's like, okay, let me find something that works. Maybe it's a cream, maybe it's a pill, maybe it's, you know, an, a nose spray. I don't know. But um, that's kind of what I want to get at with the essential oils is there's so many options when you're actually looking at all of them, you know, as a whole um, and, or as a, as a whole line, as, as all, you have all those options. Okay. And when you look inside the essential life book, which is, um, the book that I recommend everybody has, it's like our essential oil encyclopedia, extremely detailed. Every home should have one in it. Um, but when you look up, you know, an issue, um, like maybe you have a sunburn and you look up sunburn and it gives you 20 different oils to use, you're going, what? Like, wh do I, am I supposed to use all 20 oils? Am I only supposed to use one? Am I supposed to use three? So they're just giving you those options because all of those oils have those properties that would or could be useful for sunburns, right? Or any other issue you're, you're dealing with. Maybe it's, um, you know, a cardiovascular issue or anything, right? So this is kind of just to give you that background and I'm not going to go too much into detail on it, but like in the category down here, energizing, you see that there's um, peppermint in there, which we're all super familiar with, but maybe, you know, the peppermint's too strong for you or you don't really like the smell, but spearmint, oh, spearmint is your jam. That's why it's so fun to try different oils. And especially when doTERRA has different specials that they're running and you're like, you know, I don't know what, you know, spearmint or cilantro does, but I should, you know, tap into those specials so you can get that into your toolbox when you need it. And you can start playing around with these different oils. Okay. So, um, the next part of the wheel is, is again, the monoterpene backbone, but this time in our, in our functional group, we've got alcohols and ethers and esters. And I know these are all like super random words you've probably never heard of. I mean, except alcohol, of course. But we're not talking about that kind of alcohol. This is, this is different. This is in the um, chemical constituent field, okay? Um, so if we look at um, the, the top field, restoring, like these are all oils that are in the restorative category. So um, you're familiar with frankincense, extremely restorative, right? Um, helichrysum, we've already talked about that. So amazing for healing wounds so quickly. Um, but you also have, you know, like the frankincense oil, um, you'll see in the, the chemical constituent, it's alpha pining. Well, cypress oil is also very high in alpha pining. And there's, you know, eucalyptus, rosemary, cardamom. So you've got some other options there. Or maybe, you know, um, you're needing to restore um, a, you know, re restoring for bones or ligaments or, um, you know, anything like that. And you want it to heal faster. Okay, well, some of your options might be the wintergreen or helichrysum or the, um, I'm spotlighting the Siberian fir here one of my absolute favorites. Um, it's also very restorative for the lungs, a lot of these. So they have so many uses, and I'm just trying to give you a brief overview just to get some background for you. And then um, on the left, we have the clarifying oils. So we all know tea tree, super clarifying. Remember we talked to, in the last video, we talked about dogs with ear issues, and tea tree oil isn't safe for pets. Um, you know, in large uses and things like that. So what I looked at was like, what other oils are in that same category? And I tried geranium and geranium worked even better than tea tree. And so it's really interesting to see how this all correlates, right? And then if we look into the calming section, I mean, just about every single oil has calming properties. Um, but we're all very, very familiar with lavender, which is um, the chemical constituent um, very high in linalool or linal, let me see, linalool acetate, okay? Um, but it's interesting that, you know, bergamot actually is very high in linalool, even though it's a citrus oil, 
um, it's got a very different chemical makeup than say your lemon oil. Um, bergamot is calming. So that's why I put bergamot in my sleep blend. And, um, but I all, uh, another one that just uh, is really unique too is the pedigrain oil, which is actually comes from the leaf of the orange tree. Instead of the uh, rind of the orange, it's the leaf that's steam distilled. And it's very, very high in linalool, same as lavender. So really interesting how these completely different plants can have the same chemical constituents and operate in the body in a, the same way as well as a completely distinctive way. Okay, so, um, you know, this just gives you more options and more tools in your tool basket so that you can really find something that works for you. Okay, um, so in the, the top category, we have the copaiba and the chemical constituent in, well, the functional group is sesquiterpenes, which um, uh, you'll see here, uh, the oils that are high in sesquiterpenes are ylang ylang, yarrow palm, black pepper, copaiba, melissa, and ginger. Um, but I wanted to spotlight copaiba, which the main chemical constituent is caraophylline or beta caraophylline. Um, and that one is being highly, highly studied right now for its use for, um, you know, mental stability as well as pain. And this, the beta caraophylline is actually the same chemical constituent that is in CBD oil. However, it's much, much higher in concentration and again, much cheaper um, when you buy the copaiba oil. It's extremely affordable. Um, and you know it's certified pure therapeutic grade. So many of you know the CBDs on the market today are actually cut with synthetics. They're very, very low potency, even though they're so sold at a high potency. So um, just like the essential oils that are on the market today, um, you have to be very, very careful which brand you're using. Same thing there. So for me personally, I choose Copaiba, and I've switched a lot of people to Copaiba you know, nothing against CBD. If it's working for you, great. I just recommend trying it. Um, and I've seen amazing, amazing results uh, out there. So um, definitely a really big staple in my home. I keep that in my purse at all times, whether I have a headache or pain or um, just feeling that stress. And when you use it every day, you'll see um, the, your stress levels start to reduce. Okay, so let's go to stabilizing. Some of our stabilizing oils. Um, many of these are um, either our wood or root oils. So kind of interesting. Uh, Turmeric is a root. Spikenard is a root. Vetiver is a root, right? And those are all in this stabilizing category. And um, you know, vetiver we've used often with um, attention deficit issues. Um, patchouli is also known to be very grounding. That's like our hippie, hippie, hippie dippy oil. And um, the funny thing is most people don't know patchouli is actually in the mint family. Um, but the spikenard, so we talked about that in the last video with um, Pam's senior pet who is experiencing some old doggy dementia and, you know, really a lot of like confusion and you know, um, I don't know, I can't think of the other word she said, but she uses the spike nard, which is a very grounding root oil that helps stabilize the brain and stabilize her dog. And amazing results with that. And, you know, the sandalwood, another amazing stabilizer. That one actually comes from the resin of the tree. So it's interesting how these all these different plants from totally different plants yet then have the same chemical compounds in them and work the same. So you can really try um, different things that work for your body and see what you resonate with most. And that will change over time. You'll need, maybe you'll be, you know, obsessed with sandalwood for a while and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this vetiver, wow, I need this vetiver in my life, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go into organic chemistry. 
These are the hydrocarbon molecules. Ah, ha, ha, just kidding, guys. I wouldn't do that to you. Um, but you can go look up more on this, um, but I won't, I, won't, I won't go there today for you, okay? Um, plus, I'm still learning all of those, all the chemistry backbone as well. I don't know if I know it well enough to, to teach you guys yet. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, and again, you really don't need the chemistry behind it. All you need to do is have your reference guide. Um, and we say with just a book in a box, you can be empowered to take care of 80% of the issues, uh, health issues that your family deals with, with these essential oils and your reference guide. So you don't have to be a, you know, organic chemist to use essential oils. You just apply them and learn from other people. And that's why it's so important to have these um, communities of essential oil groups. And that's actually why doTERRA created um, using a network marketing model to um, share the essential oil so that it would be people teaching people teaching people. There was already essential oils on the shelves of health food stores, yet very, very small portion of the population had ever even heard of an essential oil. And I've seen a difference in just the six years that I've been with doTERRA. When I used to do a booth, I would say, have you ever heard of essential oils? And they would say no. Now, if I said that, people would be like, uh, of course I have. You think I was born in a barn? Yeah, I know what lavender oil is, you know, all that. So it, doTERRA is actually making essential oils a household name. And, you know, with that, there's more and more essential oil companies popping up. However, their purity and, you know, the mission in the world will never be like what doTERRA is doing. Okay. And so that's why I wanted to kind of go move on to talk about co-impact sourcing. So um, we have a website called source you.com and you can learn more about how doTERRA oils are sourced and the difference that it's making on the planet when um, we're, you know, contracting with these small farmers and empowering them to um, really be able to, to make a difference. And I do want to share a video with you on this and there was like so many videos and I was watching all the videos today and I was literally in tears just seeing the impact that we're making all over the world and I'm so proud to be able to work with and work for a com oops I keep forgetting to click the right thing uh, I have to share computer sound to make it work for you guys okay um and this is one of my favorite stories about the people. So really what we're trying to do here is to support smallholder farming and agriculture all over the country. Right, and yesterday we, we looked at our pink pepper sourcing and I heard about a story about a woman whose life has been completely changed through sourcing pink pepper. Yeah. So we've changed our plans. <laughs> you booked a flight last night with, with just hours notice. Yep. And we want to meet her. We want to understand uh, what, what compact sourcing means to her and her family. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen, what happened? A road accident. He, road he was accident. going to work at Naivasha there. When Veronica got news that she'd lost her husband, she was pregnant with her fifth child. Meeting Veronica was incredible because we were able to see firsthand the impact that co-impact sourcing has on families in Africa. It was hard to feed my children. I was very stressed and I strangled very much. Yeah. Yeah. Life was sad. To provide for her children, she started making ropes from the fibers of plants. She would make about 200 shillings a day, which is the equivalent of two U.S. dollars. See? As Veronica would take these ropes to sell to shopkeepers, originally they would they would buy them because they felt sorry for her. But over time, they stopped buying her ropes. So she started taking them to truck drivers to see if they would buy her rope. The truck drivers wouldn't buy her rope, but they would buy something else. And she found herself having to give away her dignity and her respect in the only way she had to provide for her children. 
Veronica and Lucy were friends. They had a common bond because they had both lost their husbands. And as they were sitting in front of the shops wondering what they were going to do to provide for their families, Kigo came and he offered them an opportunity to harvest pink pepper. That's how we met. They were, they were just sitting on the farada of the shop and I said hi to them. And I said, I've seen a lot of trees here which have got a lot of uh, pink pepper seed on them. Yeah. And I think you ladies, you can be able to do that. He told me, leave this job. It doesn't have money. Yeah. And I told her, maybe try the pink pepper. You might make slightly more than that. He told me some of the children were at home and uh, they hadn't gone to school. Even that day, I gave her some advance. I said I would cover it from the, <laughs> the seed that would be made up. So you gave her a little bit of an advance. Yeah. You to, took a risk on her. Yeah, yeah. And then she delivered some pink pepper. Yeah, the following day actually she had like 20 kilos. Really? Wow. The next yeah. day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Since Veronica started harvesting pink pepper, she now makes 1,500 shillings a day on average versus just two or 300 shillings a day before. I like to work. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to, to stay idle. Yeah. But when you, you stay idle, when you gossip, your children will sleep without uh, anything in their stomach. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I like to work. Right. Yeah. Veronica and Lucy are just two examples of the hundreds, if not thousands, of lives that are and will be impacted by the harvest of pink pepper. That's why we do quantum sourcing. It will always be about the individual and how we can make their lives better. That job is good because this time I afford to rent, I afford to eat, I afford to cover my children, my family. <laughs> that I thanks for Mr. Kigo and I thanks for you all. Yeah, like they said, I mean, that's just one of the many, many stories about um, co-impact sourcing and how it really makes an impact on the planet. No one has really discovered the benefits of copaiba until now, although it's been historically used. We now are truly starting. Go back, share, play. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so there's a few parts to co-impact sourcing. So um, it's, you know, really getting the oils at the source, environmental stewardship, so like, really making a difference for the planet, sustainability, and then solutions for poverty, okay? And when doTERRA began, you know, they went, they searched the world to find the best essential oils. And that's why they actually started this company. There was three of them, Dr. Hill, Emily Wright, and Dave Sterling. And they were on a mission to create the best oils and that's it, the most pure, the most potent oils. And so when it started, they only had what, five or six oils. And now we have over a hundred essential oils sourced from more than 40 nations all over the world. And the, where we source the oils from is where the plants thrive most. And a lot of times it is in their indigenous land. And we could go on, you know, and tell a story, an hour long story for every single oil and where it's sourced and how it's making a difference. And I do, um, you know, recommend that you go onto the source to you.com and go onto YouTube and look up doTERRA sourcing videos because they're really impactful to see the work that we're doing on the planet. And that's why it's so important for me to share this mission because every bottle of oil makes a difference in someone's life, like, you know, those two ladies. So, um, because of the co-impact sourcing, we've, 
and the amount of uh, the the relationships that we've built with all of these people, the villagers and the farmers around the world, um, they only want to work with doTERRA. And so we have a 98% exclusivity. So that means 98% of our oils, the oil that's produced wherever it's produced, only is sold to doTERRA. It's not sold to any other company. Okay, so when company, a lot of companies say, oh, our oils are just like doTERRA's. No, they're not. They are definitely 100% not like doTERRA. Okay, um, so just wanted to give you a little bit of information here. Um, so at the source, traceability. That means we know exactly where that plant is coming from. We know the people that created it, the owners of the company, they go out and actually physically visit these areas. And they have whole teams of people. They're so, so um, founded in integrity and making a difference that they're able to build re these relationships. And then the process. So they know the process from, cult from the planting, the cultivation, the um, distillation. Many, many of the oils are actually distilled on site. Like you saw that in the other video, the lemongrass was being distilled on site so that you don't lose any of that medicinal value. Okay, and then the second one is environmental stewardship. So sustainability, ensuring longevity of the plant ecosystems and efficiency in production methods. So we're making sure not only is there just enough oil for right now, that there's enough oil for years and years to come. And this has been a huge one with the frankincense trees. The frankincense has been over uh, over um, harvested in many areas and we have we have an entire scientist team in Somalia that just oversees the health of the plants to make sure there's no over harvesting going on um, and again oh my gosh I could tell you stories for hours and hours on this stuff um, it's so neat and so awesome to me um, but it's about you know complying you know they're always about complying with you know, national and international environmental regulations and guidelines, preserving the native biodiversity, reducing carbon footprint, and providing, you know, really just the, the training on sustainability and compliance and making sure, you know, because a lot of these people, um, two thirds of our oils come from developing nations. So they're not, you know, as present to all of the issues with the, um, you know, environmental issues that we are here that we get, we hear about all the time. And so, you know, just, you know, keeping clean water and, and those kind of things, like we're doing a lot of education and training. So poverty solutions, obviously it's creating jobs, so many jobs. And um, there, we make sure to have fair on-time payments, fair labor conditions, um, capacity buildings, making sure they have the right um, equipment to be able to distill all the oils, and then community development. So um, through our Healing Hands Foundation, which is our nonprofit arm of doTERRA, we're able to provide wells, um, schools, all kinds of amazing, amazing things. Um, and I actually got to go on a co-impact sourcing trip. So as a leader in doTERRA, you um, put your name into a lottery to go on these um, trips and go make a difference in these areas. So we actually helped to build um, a school there and um, we got to pick the cardamom, we got to sort it. And um, you see the picture on the top left is me and my friend Jackie after all the work was done. Those are the bags full of the cardamom essential oil. And it's just incredible, like getting to see firsthand the difference that we make in these communities worldwide. I, I my life is impacted. It will never be the same. And I know why I do what I do. And I know every bottle of cardamom, which cardamom is actually in the breathe oil as well. So every bottle of breathe your um, purchasing goes to help these people in Guatemala that we, we took 10 hours on a bus out into the middle of the jungle. They don't even speak Spanish in those areas or very few people speak Spanish. They speak, um, and we, were, we went into the, these areas to go work with the kids and 
they speak a dialect of Mayan. And in this area, there's 12 dialects spoken. So everything had to be translated from Mayan to Spanish to English, English to Spanish to Mayan, so that we could you know, learn from these farmers. And they were so proud to show us their homes and their farms. And it was just an incredible experience. So um, definitely go on here, learn, go on source to you, learn about the sourcing, where these plants come from. Um, I know everybody's into watching documentaries now. Um, take some time and go on source to you. Better than a documentary. And then on um, the website, I know my picture is kind of covering up, but there's a little spot up in the corner where you can get your essential oil bottle. And on the bottom of the bio bottle, there's a lot number. Every bottle, um, it shares the lot number of each batch of essential oil. So you can go on here, you can enter the batch number, you can um, get the test results for that batch number. So I put my bergamot bottle in and um, it's, you can download the test result of the PDF from the ARPC, which is, um, oh gosh, I hope I say it right. Yeah, Aromatic Plant Research Center. And they're the largest laboratory that tests essential oils and their purity. And so they, we um, third party contract them to test every single batch of doTERRA essential oil. And um, unless they come back and say, this oil is pure bergamot or pure lavender, it is not going into the bottles and doTERRA won't sell it. Okay, so this is a product you know you can trust, especially when we're telling you, take these oils internally. You should not take any other brand of essential oil internally. They're not going to have that same purity. Um, and there's actually many, many ways that you can skew testing of the oil. So other companies may have certain tests, but um, you want to, we do a wide spectrum test to make sure there's absolutely no contamination possible. Okay. And then I wanted to go back to the Healing Hands Foundation. Okay. So you saw co impact sourcing. That's where we empower um, large networks of small farmers. And we do not own our own farms. And the reason for that is because we want to empower these small farmers because they're gonna be able to provide a better product and create a sustainable living for themselves by doing that. If we owned the farms, if we hired farmers to come work our farms, that pride of ownership diminishes. And um, we're able to empower just so many, so many communities by creating this model of co-impact sourcing. But our other arm of doTERRA is the Healing Hands Foundation. And it is a nonprofit. And um, every dollar donated to the Healing Hands Foundation goes directly back into projects. None of it, um, doTERRA covers all the administrative costs and all of the expenses is donated 100% by doTERRA Corporation. There, no, none of the money that is donated to Healing Hands, um, it goes into paying any of those executives or administration costs, okay? And so you can just donate a lump sum to them, or you can buy the doTERRA Rose Lotion or the Hope essential oil blend um, both of them are $20 and all $20 goes directly to the Healing Hands Foundation and goes out into projects so no it's not the proceeds from it's 100% of the $20 you pay goes directly to certain projects all over the world and in the US too so not just um, in in all over the world but one of um, oh my gosh like Again, we could do a whole series on that, but one of the um, foundations that um, the Hope Oil specifically goes to target sex trafficking and human trafficking. And this is a big passion of mine to actually bring awareness and um, put an end to sex trafficking and human trafficking, especially for children. And the Hope Oil actually goes into directly into human trafficking um, anti-human trafficking projects, okay? And one of the, um, there's there's several organizations, but one of them is called Operation Underground Railroad. 
And um, if you don't follow Tim Ballard and Operational Underground Railroad, go follow them on Instagram. Unbelievable the work that they're doing to, you know, rescue kids and um, rehabilitate them and just absolutely incredible. So you'll want to um, add these items to your, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, my uh, Bluetooth speaker is ringing. It's a spam call. So I answered it and hung up on them. Um, okay, anyways, um, so you want to, you know, really, you know, the, this make wonderful gifts for people. The rose lotion smells absolutely incredible. And the other thing you can do is just add a dollar. There's a little button you can check in your shopping cart every month in your loyalty rewards program order. Check that box and donate a dollar. Um, you know, there's 6 million doTERRA customers. If everyone just donated a dollar, even once a year, that's, you know, $6 million that could be really making a huge impact. And so, um, you know, I'm very careful with the organizations that I donate to because some of them, you know, just go towards administration and all of these, you know, things that really aren't going to help people. And when you donate to this company or foundation, you are helping people. Okay. Um, okay. And then our team um, itself, actually, um, we have done several fundraisers for Operation Underground Railroads and the Healing Hands Foundation. And so it's become kind of a mission on our team to end human trafficking as well. So um, not just, you know, it just kind of every, everybody's gotten on board because we know we can make a huge difference by just doing a if everyone just did a little bit. But anyways, when, uh, I wanted to go over the Loyalty Rewards Program again and just remind you um, how much money you can save and how much free products you can get over the year um, for being a Loyalty Rewards member, okay? So within the, the first, one to three months, you'll get 10% back in points. Four to six months, 15% back in points. Seven to nine months, 20% back in points. 10 to 12 months, 25% back. And after a year, you get 30% back in points. Plus, you always get your shipping back in points as well. So if you do um, $3.99 um, economy shipping, you get four points. If you do $7.99 UPS shipping, you get seven points. I'm sorry, $6.99, you get seven points. And then again, just want to remind you to maintain your loyalty rewards because loyalty rewards is a monthly order that you can edit and change every month to get um, the oils that you want. So you're not locked into the same thing every month. You want to edit it. Of course, you want your vitamins every month and you might need, you know, a breathe stick one month and toothpaste one month, laundry soap, you know, so you can you know, change it around to whatever you're needing that month. But you need to do at least one PV, PV means product value, and you'll see every oil or every product has a PV amount and a dollar amount. Um, most of them are equal, okay? And then, um, so you have to do at least one PV every month to stay in the program. And then you would need to do 50 PV in order to earn points back and move up the percentage ladder. Um, 100 PV in order to qualify to receive income and then 125 PV to get by the 15th of the month and you would get a free product of the month, okay? So if we do the math, if you do 125 PV order every month for your first year in doTERRA, you'd be getting about 490 50 free. And I did, um, you know, average the free product of the month at $12, which is low, sometimes it's more. Um, but so it's about 500 bucks in free stuff just in your first month. Then um, after your um, first year in the program, if you did the 50 PV minimum at least every month, you would then earn almost $700 in free product your second year. And actually, if you add that up, if you do 125 PV, that's um, times 12, that's 1500. So you're basically getting 50% of what you buy again, another $700 in free stuff. So 
almost, right? Um, but I just wanted to share that with you because I think that is phenomenal. I don't see many companies giving you this much back. I mean, on my credit cards, I'm getting what, 3% back. This is 30% back. That is absolutely huge. Okay. And then, you know, this is the eighth video. So I wanted to give you more options. If you're loving learning and you want to go learn more um, on doTERRA.com, we have the empowered life series. So there's about three years of archived videos that do talk a lot about the science and how these different products work. Um, and every month there's different um, topics so you can go on and learn on, on these free webinars on doTERRA.com it's called empowered life and we also have the um, imp uh, essential oil solutions with doTERRA podcast so um, all the archive podcasts are on doTERRA.com or you can you know download the podcast on your favorite um, Apple podcast or Spotify or whatever you use okay and I wanted to show you one more video, I know, that I think, well, I mean, I also love this video because I'm actually in the video. Um, my Guatemala trip was actually featured on this video at convention last year. And it really just sums up the heart of this company and I hope that's what you, I, that was my intention for this video, that you really get to walk away with the heart of who doTERRA is, as well as um, you're inspired to, you know, keep using your doTERRA products because you know the quality is just uncomparable to any other brand of essential oil out there. What is purity? Is it the absence of contaminants? Something pristine? unadulterated? Or is it the way we treat others, the conditions on which we give? Is purity a love, the kind felt for a distant community as if it were a close-knit family? Or is it the will to do good for no other reason than because it's good? Is it honesty, fairness, good character? One thing's for sure, Purity is not easy. The pursuit of purity requires more than just conviction. It means rejecting even the thought of cutting a corner. It means doing what's right, even when what's right is what's seemingly insurmountable. We are more than just an essential oils company. We are in the business of empowerment. Everything we do is designed to open opportunity. Whether it's a farmer inspired, a mother assured, an athlete emboldened, or an entrepreneur on fire, this is our mission, to empower through purity. It's why we don't just buy farms, we build farmers. It's why we don't just see another's potential, we make sure they see it themselves. It's why we turn wellness advocates into advocates of change through our product as well as our purpose. It's why everything we do is designed to empower others. And best of all, we're not alone. So let's pursue together. Let's pursue healthier families and happier communities, kinder interactions and stronger connections. Let's pursue understanding and common ground humility, empathy, and charity. Let's pursue being the difference that makes all the difference. Let's pursue a smile on the face of everyone we meet and a positive impact left behind everywhere we go. Because when the pure gifts of the earth are paired with the pure love of each other, there is no telling what we can achieve. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. Perfect. Okay, so my final thoughts is just thank you so much for being with us for these last eight videos. It's been an absolute blast to get. So to this is Yarrow. 
to get to create this content, all of our favorite things, be able to share all of our favorite recipes from our team, feature you know, our top leaders, and to really be able to bring the information to everybody, um, whether you're local and it's just you know hard to get to classes or you're you know far from where i live and i don't get to meet you i can't wait to get to know you and be able to support you on your journey and so i just invite you to be a part of something bigger whether that's just being a doTERRA customer for life and really empowering yourself in your health and transforming your health in whatever way um, you need or can see and or it's empowering others, you know, with sharing the doTERRA products and educating people or leading a team of amazing people that are going to change the world. So thank you for being with me again. And on behalf of all of our leaders, they wanted me to let you know, thank you as well and join our communities, join in the fun and education and community so that you know we can all lift each other up. Thank you again, bye.